Before we look at our next example, uh, let's go back and look. This graph does have two x-intercepts, quadratics, based on the fact that they uh, have a degree of two. We'll either have two x-intercepts at most, one x-intercept, or zero x-intercepts. And we'll explore this throughout uh, our section here on quadrats, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, we're going to do another example here and show you how to graph. Uh, again, the first thing we're going to try to do, since it's already in standard form, is we're going to try to find our vertex. And our vertex is important to us uh, because our vertex will help us figure out where our function changes from uh, decreasing to increasing. Uh, so it's going to be very important to us as we're going through. Remember that it is the opposite of how it appears inside the parentheses for the h value. So x plus 3 will result in an h value of negative 3, and then k is going to move us up 1. So we're going to graph our vertex, 1, 2, 3, up 1. So here's our vertex. Remember our axis of symmetry? I'm just going to do abbreviations this time. It's going to be x is equal to negative 3. So that is the vertical line that's going to pass right down through your vertex. And the good news is it's going to basically divide your graph into two nice little equal parts for us. Now in this one, our a is a positive 1. So we're going to multiply the y values that we would uh, have by 1. So normally when we go right 1, we go up 1. But uh, now we're going to go right 1 and up 1 times 1, which will also give us 1. So you can see when you have an a value of 1, it's not really going to affect the normal shape of a parabola. And I think that's like on page 255 if you want to go back and look and you can uh, see some of the characteristics of a general form for a parabola. Now, normally when we go right 2, we're going to go up 4, but 4 times 1 is also going to be 4, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, again, we're moving just from our vertex. We always refer back to our vertex when we're doing this movement. Uh, we're going to go right 3, and then 3 squared will give us 9. Again, that's what we're doing. We're squaring the x value to get the y value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Good news, there's symmetry, so if I go right 3 up 9, I'm going to go left 3 up 9 also. Now, as you can see, if I go right 4 from my vertex, I would go up 16, but that won't fit on my graph. So this time our graph's a little bit different. As you can see, this time our graph is opening up, and that's because A is positive. The other effects that has on our graph is your vertex is no longer going to be a maximum value. This time it represents the minimum value for our graph. So again, your vertex is going to be negative 3, comma, 1. So the minimum value of our graph is 1, okay? Where it occurs is at negative 3. So those are important ideas. The minimum value is the y value. Where that minimum uh, value occurs is going to be represented by your x value. This graph does not cross the x-axis, so therefore there are what they call no zeros for this function.